let's go on with our next speaker. It's Nick Thomas from Somato, and I'm really happy to hear something about audio because uh, we have just heard a pretty emotional talk from Oscar Clark, and I'm pretty bought in already in what he told us. And one thing about emotional, uh, how to engage people emotionally is, in my opinion, definitely audio and sound and music. And uh, yeah, w welcome Nick Thomas. Uh, he will give us some insights about casual games uh, and how audience make, uh, sorry, how audio make them into a success, I hope. Yeah, cool, welcome Nick. Thank you. Hello everyone. Let me just, okay, great. So uh, my name is Nick Thomas. I'm the founder and CEO of Somatone Interactive and we are one of the leading providers of audio for casual games we work on actually all games, so AAA all the way through to casual. Um, but this speech is really obviously going to focus on the casual game genre and you know, what you guys can be doing, uh, kind of tools and techniques uh, and thought processes that you can integrate into your game design, into production to really bring uh, game audio up to the next level. Uh, a lot of this is uh, work that we do and bring to our partners, uh, most of whom are publishers, but a lot of independent game developers as well. Just real quick, you'll notice uh, the date on here, this is built off an old template, and I am horrible at PowerPoint, so I didn't know how to change that. So just ignore the date in the corner. Uh, and I'm also gonna tell you I have a flight, you guys know about the strike that's going on, so my flight is like right after the speech. So uh, the Q&A may be a little bit short because I have to run uh, if I'm going to make my flight. Okay. <clears throat> so a little bit about me real quick. We started the company back in 2003. Uh, we've been m mostly uh, working in the casual game genre really since the beginning. Um, so back in 2005 with Mystery Case Files and Diner Dash and Big Fish Games and Wild Tangent and Play Fish or Play First. Um, for those of you who've been in this industry for a while, it's been an interesting evolution to arrive where we are today. Uh, but I know many people are just kind of coming into the casual game industry more recently. We do about 150 games per year. So we're a pretty big studio. Uh, we do a lot of, a lot of content um, really across all genres. But the majority these days is really mobile games, social games, uh, still sometimes PC downloadable, although that genre has uh, gotten much smaller. We have a team of 15 and uh, we produce probably over a thousand games total in the last nine years. Um, we also just actually opened an art division too. So some of this stuff is more generally creative in terms of creative concepts, but the real focus today will be on audio. So, you know, it's always interesting when I give this presentation, the room is generally different every time. Uh, so I'm curious, just by a show of hands, how many of you are game producers or game designers? Okay, great. Uh, how many of you are on the technical side, programmers? Okay, and any of you audio people, musicians, composers? Okay, just a couple. Okay, and that's actually what I figured, so I, I really tailored the speech more to be for uh, producers and designers, and you know, some of this will uh, makes sense for audio professionals, but um, really this is for producers and how to work with a audio team to get the best results. Um, nearly all game production studios that are doing mobile social games do not have the resources to have an internal team. So it's the, one of the most commonly outsourced parts of production because it just doesn't make financial sense to staff an audio person for you know, one, two games a year, or even on the publisher level, uh, the volume may be too high or the needs too diverse to staff internally. So it's part of the reason why we see so many games from so many clients is because it's uh, sort of an easy thing to, to outsource. And one of the first things to talk about is, you know, really what casual games are these days. The, the term has changed, uh, the meaning has changed. Uh, you know, this is what Wikipedia says, but really, what we're going to talk about is casual games as a genre, not as a platform, okay? Um, if you guys are making hardcore games, but you're putting it on a mobile device, uh, for me, in my opinion, that's not actually a casual game. 
that's just a hardcore game on a very small game console. Uh, casual games are really defined uh, more sort of strictly. And, and I, I think the, the main definition for what makes a casual game a casual game is that it has kind of a low skill level in order to play it. Now that doesn't mean it's not very fun, it just means you don't need nine buttons and years of growing up as a gamer to understand how to succeed with the game and therefore have it be fun. So low skill level is really what I consider to be casual games. Medium skill level strategy games uh, that you see on uh, Facebook often. It's this, this sort of mid-core market uh, that's emerging. Then high skill levels are really you know, hardcore games. And again, the platform doesn't matter. Demographics have typically been female weighted, although that's really changing more recently. Um, mechanics are simple, kind of one click, uh, you know, gesture or swipe. Puzzles, match three games, hogs, uh, physics based games and so forth. And easy in, easy out type of game. So if you guys are making these types of games, this is really kind of what I consider to be classic casual. It's a little blurry, it's changing now, there's more kind of in the middle. Um, but the first thing I want to go over are these sort of false assumptions that um, producers and designers should try to avoid. Um, we see these all the time, and we really uh, work to help people find creative solutions to avoid these because they, they lead to compromised quality. Uh, it's really not the best way to engage. So one assumption is that a short timeline for the audio production is a requirement due to the nature of mobile development. You guys will often be working, working, working. The timeline is fast, and audio will be thought of towards the end of the development process and sort of shoved in at the last minute in uh, a sprint to get it complete. Um, and that is a, an incorrect and a false assumption in terms of how to approach audio. Audio can and should begin much earlier in the process. On a conceptual level, it should begin in the design phase, where you're really thinking about what the audio treatment is going to be, how you're going to approach it on a creative and on a technical level. But in terms of the actual production, the actual design, that can start much earlier, even when you're just working on a prototype or maybe a vertical slice. It's a great opportunity to take a, a moment there, hand off a bit of a creative brief, and allow some music and some sounds to begin to be worked on so that the process can move in parallel and not show up as a sort of last minute, last ditch effort to stuff content in on the back end. Um, the next is that a small project scope is the best approach due to technical limitations or financial concerns. Um, and I, I actually don't think that that's, that's correct either. Um, you know, in my opinion, Bad audio or, or lack of audio demonstrates poor production values for your players. You could have a very clever game, you could have a very clever mechanic, you could have excellent art, but if you have really poor quality audio, it sends a, a sort of incomplete experience to the player. It, it, you're missing a very key ability to communicate uh, high production values, and you take all this wonderful creative design and concept work, and you diminish it by putting poor quality audio in place. Um, and you know, what you're doing there is really encouraging your players to turn off the audio. And once you've done that, once you've encouraged them to turn the audio off, you are taking away a huge opportunity to connect with your players, to brand your game, to bring them in, to connect them emotionally or through some sort of audio or musical sound or voice kind of signature qualities to the game. Um, so oftentimes producers don't feel like they need a specific creative brief which details the audio. Um, and I would encourage you to think more of audio as auditory art. Um, so you know, spend some time to define the sonic experience and emotional values that you want your players to feel. You can write this out, you can use uh, you know, other media or reference materials, but just to spend an hour, a day, a week, whatever it takes you, to really think about the audio and put some effort and thought into what you're looking for is a, a great way to ensure you're going to get results um, rather than just 
kind of chancing it or leaving it the hands of somebody who doesn't understand your vision or your game the way that you do. Uh, another false assumption is that casual games are best managed as a budget-driven process versus a quality-driven process. And this is a tough, uh, it's, it's a tough um, item to discuss sometimes with limited budgets, with independent developers, people that are really working on a, a hamst hamstring budget. But you know the difference between uh, even $500 of investment in your audio can make a, a massive difference in the final experience. If you don't have you know a really good theme, if you're missing a couple of key sound effects, if you are going to use the line item budget to make a firm limit on the audio investment, you are going to compromise the audio. Now that's not to say you should just you know, spend endlessly on it, but think creatively and not in a binary fashion about your audio approach because it's often the time that just a little bit more or a few extra sounds or a little bit more music is a huge difference in terms of the replayability, the uh, quality level, and the experience that you're communicating with the quality of your game. So, you know, one assumption is that audio doesn't matter. Uh, hopefully, if you guys are in this room, you don't, you don't actually believe that. But uh, there are all the statistics that people hear on social games of how many people play with audio off, or on uh, mobile games, how many people play with the audio off. And our philosophy is that no matter what statistics you've read, it's a, it's a really critical part of the game experience. And to take a little bit of a cue from Oscar, it's a, it's a huge branding opportunity. Um, you know, there's a lot that can be done in the branding of your games through key sounds, through key hooks. Um, you know, a couple very good examples of these games are, you know, Angry Birds uh, or Pagel, um, both of which use audio to really create the experience. If you play Pagel uh, with the audio off, you, you miss a huge part of that game. It's, uh, you know, a big part of the engagement level and the user feedback is coming from that audio experience. So do not make the assumption that audio doesn't matter or that players turn it off because you're, you're just taking away a great opportunity to connect with your players. So for those of you who are making games for the first time or you haven't really uh, worked with a, maybe an outsourced professional team, you know, it's nice just to talk about the budgets, what you guys should plan to invest in a game um, what we see working with so many publishers and developers kind of boils down to a, a typical sort of baseline average, which is about five to seven percent of your production budget you would want to, you know, put aside for the audio experience. It breaks down differently in different genres. Um, you know, for mobile social games, if you're working with uh, roughly $100,000 in terms of your budget, this is not your outsource budget. This is your overhead, your internal staff basically your total investment in the game, you should be thinking about 5%, $5,000 or so for a, a high quality premium audio soundtrack. Uh, social games are very dynamic, so there's a pretty wide range. Um, PC downloadable, and then you've got kind of XBLA, you know, DS and moving up into Wii and other, other genres. But, you know, I think for this room and for this discussion, we're really talking about probably the first two categories for the most part. Okay, so here are some recommendations for your creative management. Um, so casual games offer a really great opportunity for a diverse range of musical styles, um, much greater than you'll find in, in film or core gaming. So think outside the box. You know, you don't need an orchestral, sort of traditional cinematic score. There are really fun opportunities to do uh, unique music, bring in unique instrumentation, and uh, I think casual games support that more than almost any other game genre because the design is so diverse. Uh, you see a much more homogenized type of game design in larger, you know, kind of hardcore gaming. But casual games move through this huge swath. So. Think outside the box. Look for a high degree of audio branding in your music and sound design to make your games sticky. So main themes, signature sound effects. I think one of my favorite and 
in most powerful ways to brand a game is through what we call signature sound effects. And these are a handful of key sounds. Either they're not throughout the game, but you know, special moments, level ups, mission completes. If you unlock a certain power, or you know, at certain places in your game, you can really use audio to create a brand for your game, so that when you hear it, it keeps reinforcing that game for you. Or if you hear it on the bus, you know, or on the train, you know immediately what game they're playing because of that key signature sound. Uh, it's a very powerful tool, and it's a very simple, uh, you know, sort of um, thing to incorporate. The design element can actually be tricky, but technically, it's a very simple way to add a, a real hook to your game. Uh, look for something new rather than cloning of a preceding game. You know, there's many clones in gaming. There's many sort of mechanics that are copied, and that's fine. People do it differently, but if you're going to make a similar game to someone else use audio as an opportunity to diversify your game from something that might be similar to it in the marketplace. You don't have to do the same treatment audio-wise that a competing game has done. Uh, it's actually a great opportunity to do something different and to create a fresh brand for your game, even if it's similar to something else. Um, standard library sound effects and music loops just don't cut it anymore. So this, as you guys know, this genre of gaming is too competitive. There's so much competition for players, for attention. Audio is not the place to short yourself uh, when it comes to distinguishing your game and standing out from the crowd. It really makes sense to invest in what is a relatively cheap component of your game production. At 5%, it's just a small fraction with a huge opportunity to do something that's unique and uh, capture your players. So we, we feel like it's a very powerful and very low barrier of entry to making your games really powerful and successful. So here are some sort of tips for game producers. Um, you guys can email me. I'm happy to send you all these notes if you want for your own files. I can just send you this whole PowerPoint. Uh, but these are key things just to kind of think about when you're in your production. Have a vision you can cl clearly communicate. We talked a little bit about this, but spend some time defining the audio in such a way that you can communicate what you want through reference, through YouTube links, through popular music that you like, uh, whatever works for you. Allow your audio designer to make suggestions to the scope, creative tech, implementation, and so forth. So it's a real partnership. Um, we find the most successful games are ones where the producers or designers have concepts but that it then evolves as a collaboration. So we in encourage you to invite the feedback of audio professionals. This is an important one. Proper, proper tech and integration is 50% of great audio. So ca you know, great audio is not plug and play. You can't just drop stuff in and expect it to work. You have to put it in and tinker with it, make sure it's working. Um, and you have to leave room in the schedule for your audio people to polish. Uh, many times it plays back differently than you might think when you are conceptualizing it, but the actual experience is different when the files are integrated. And the last thing is, devil is in the detail, the mix is key. The mix of the audio is really maybe the single most important part of a very high quality polished audio experience. If one sound is too loud or one music sting is too loud, it will throw off the whole experience. And that's the moment where your player hits mute. So you really have to mix your audio so every sound, every music file, every sting, voiceover line, all the way across the board is set up in such a way that it's smooth, seamless, cohesive, if you want your players to really stay engaged with the audio. This is something I probably won't go through all this because I'm out of time, but this, if I send this to you, this is kind of a worksheet for producers and designers to use to help you guys establish uh, a plan or a creative brief for audio. Audio is often actually fairly difficult for producers because they don't maybe have the same tools or vocabulary that they might have for art or technology. So, um, you know, music, this helps you kind of think about where you want it, the style of music, how to approach it. 
a um, little more of the same, and then the same is true for sound design. What kind of keywords can be used to help your sound designers understand the uh, type of assets you're looking for, the type of design approach that uh, you're, you're hoping for in your game. Um, and so this is sort of just like a worksheet to, uh, to help. So that's it. Hope you guys found that helpful, valuable. I maybe have time for one question, but uh, as I said, I got to run to the airport. So. I, um, I'm not an audio person, but um, for indie developers that are doing games, they don't have like the, the high end budget. They're not doing 100,000, mm -hmm. or they got funding. Mm -hmm. What do you suggest for them to do? Because you said, um, you know, the bot files aren't cutting it anymore. Yep. Yeah, the best thing to do is to have a real transparent conversation with whoever you want to work with, and let them know, this is what I've got. What is the what's the best bang for the buck? Um, and that may be just a very high end front end theme and a couple key signature sounds and then the rest you fill in with stock audio. Um, you want to look for the opportunity that you can find to create player engagement and brand your game so that people keep coming back and they kind of get those re audio rewards and payoffs. But I recognize not everyone has the, you know, the, the funding to go as far as they might want. So you can mix and match. Okay, that's it, I'm off to the airport, thank you.